As I often do, uh, just a couple of things here before we get into the reading of the scriptures. Um, I got word, Jeff, that you're turning the prayer service over to me tonight. No, I'll be back. I'm, I'm on it. Oh, you're on. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. Twelve nineteen. Mark that on your calendars. I started to plug that the last time I was with you, I think, uh, maybe a time or two. It's a Sunday. It's uh, during the church service. We have our Sunday school Christmas program. And uh, keep that in your calendars. And we're going to start working on that. But make sure you save that out if you can. And I'd like to see a lot of people here and, and just to be able to, to view something that I think you'll um, get a real good message and a real good lesson out of, but a lot of smiles at the same time. So 1219, December 19th, right during the church service, there's a Sunday school uh, program uh, coming up. And it doesn't look like it's that far away now, but it, it walks right up on you real quick. So, okay? Just those things that I wanted to say. And uh, before we actually read the scripture, we're going to do a, a, a little bit of a dive into a little bit of this and that, and then back into the scriptures uh, that I have uh, picked out here for you today. But today is Halloween, and I've had messages that uh, ran right straight through from beginning to end dealing with Halloween. But I just want to brief you on, on Halloween as it is. And uh, so much of Halloween, uh, especially in the time that we've lived and we've known, um, people think immediately of evil and scary things and, and all the kind of things you can pick up uh, certainly on the TV about ghosts and anything uh, that's crazy, uh, bad, uh, evil, whatever. Um, but if we go back in history long enough and study our Christian faith, Halloween, I think some of you are going to say, oh yeah, I remember when you said that, and that's good. Halloween was actually started uh, by the Christian community of old. And if you take uh, the word hollow out of Halloween, uh, Halloween is all hollows eve, okay? And tonight, uh, if we were back in the day, I'm talking way, way back, uh, very early times of the church, we would all be out on the streets if we lived in town, uh, wherever we might have lived, but we would gather somewhere, and we would light fires and light torches, and we would pray for all the souls of the saints that had passed on. And in that time, you have to remember that the time in which they lived, there was there's a lot of different superstitions and things that were associated with it. But we would be praying for their souls for protection from the evil spirits that would try to rob them. So it's a Christian theme. And I always remember that no matter how much it's played up. And it just seems to me like in the last years here, in recent history, uh, more goes into Halloween sometimes, I think, than, than Christmas when you drive by. And I always endure it. It's okay. I like the fall part of it. Uh, the fall colors and the pumpkins and all that um, as we continue on with that up until Thanksgiving. But I want you to know that Halloween is not an evil holiday as, as we, we've commercially portrayed it to be. Uh, it's something we uh, have to remember it was a Christian holiday. Which brings us to November 1st, which is, the, which is tomorrow, and that is All Saints Day. So the, the two uh, come in together, okay? And you might not even, what's All Saints Day? It is on the calendar, some calendars, as you see the old paper calendars. But if you study church history again, it's a celebration of all those uh, who have served the Lord and went on, and uh, they're with, uh, with the Lord in, their, in his kingdom. And so it's at this point, before we get into the scripture and, and the main uh, gears of the lesson here today, I'm going to ask you uh, and give you a minute here to mention the names of anyone in your life that has been uh, very formative in your Christian upbringing, has put down a, a Christian foundation, and it can be a Sunday school teacher, uh, a youth leader, a pastor, uh, maybe it was Billy Graham, or maybe it was your grandmother, but if you're willing to mention it today, uh, we're that close, like, you know, if it was any closer in midweek, you could do it next Sunday, but we're that close, so I'm going to uh, ask you to, to mention their names. Um, some years, uh, back when Eunice Lust was here, I remember she had... Uh, I think it was Walt standing up here with, with white gloves with these special bells that couldn't be touched with, uh, with human skin. And every time we'd mention a name, he'd ring a bell. But I'm just going to say today we're going we're gonna to mention those names, and God knows that we've mentioned them. And I know that you have some special people 
uh, in your hearts today that have been leaders. So I'm going to open that up. Anyway. Any others? Yep. Yep. Every day is a good day. Always remember. Any others? My mother. My mom. Mm hmm Any others you'd like to share? My grade school teachers. Every morning. Very important, and the seed is sown, even though you don't realize it always. Uh, yep. Wonderful. Any others? Okay. Yeah. Anybody else? Okay. Yeah. Any others? As I'm looking around here. My Sunday school teacher. Yes. Any others would like to share? My parents, the yep. Harvard Decker of Friends in Huntington, mm -hmm. Geraldine Stewart, my aunt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any others as we're gathered here this morning? Steve's mother was a wonderful uh, Sunday school teacher. Okay. She was called the candy lady because she gave me candy. That's probably why they stayed in. Still works today. <laughs> Any others would like to share before we close this part? My grandmother, Dorothy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. My father. Yep. Any others before we close? Wonderful stuff. Wonderful to hear. And it certainly does uh, tie in Halloween to All Saints Day. If you forget everything else as we move along, just remember. Halloween isn't the evil uh, thing it's portrayed to be today, even though we do have to be careful with the stuff that is portrayed today and put out there. Uh, it is not an evil holiday. It was uh, started as a Christian holiday. So I'm going to ask you to go to your scriptures now, if you would. Matthew 17 is where we're going, as you see printed in your bulletin. And we're starting with verse uh, uh, 14, and we're going to 21, okay? Matthew 17, 14 to 21. And when they had come to the multitude, a man came to him, kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is an epileptic and suffers severely, for he often falls into the fire and often into the water. Now, I want you to know that the epileptic uh, term used here isn't necessarily that, but it, it is, uh, it's a demonic possession, which they uh, use this term, so it's not to be... Uh, derogatory in any sense for those that have that condition, but uh, it's used here, uh, as you'll see in a minute, uh, how it's translated and how the Lord defines it and, and brings it to light and takes care of it. 16. So I brought him to your disciples, but they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him here to me. So you can see the frustration that Jesus had uh, sometimes with his own disciples, but he knew. And verse 18, and Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. And the disciples came to Jesus privately and said, Why could we not cast it out? And 20, so Jesus said to them, Because of your unbelief, for assuredly, I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, and this is the title of the the message here today. You will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will be, it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. However, this kind does not come out except by prayer and fasting. So we have a, 
a little bit of a Halloween theme in there because all that we hear is, is uh, the demons and everything and talked about and more than just Halloween. But um, this is the word of the Lord. Let's so bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father, we do praise you again for the, the wonderful word that we can go to and we can do that freely here in the United States. We do thank you for the power of your spirit which translates, interprets, inspires as we look at your word. We pray that today would be no different, that you would help us to see things that you would have us to see, know things you would have us to know, and give us equipment and desire to go out and to share with the rest of the world those things which we gather as we read and study your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Given a choice, if I were to go away, um, take a vacation, which we don't very much uh, lately, um, with farming and all. If I were given a, two blanks to fill out, okay? The beach or the mountains, I would choose the mountains every time. And now Tammy's been in back there because she would choose the other. But um, I would choose the mountains every time because that's just what I, I, I really like. Uh, anything to do with, with a mountain, okay? Uh, going to the top of the mountain, climbing on the mountain. I know my, uh, my grandfather always used to say to be able to get up to the top of the mountain, don't worry about the rocks because the rocks were put there uh, so that you could climb on them and, and make your way uh, to the top. But I just want you to think about uh, the mountains today, the mustard seed. Mustard the seed is, is very, very tiny. And uh, just to roll it in quick for you, if you get tired or hungry or um, trick-or-treat minded or whatever, um, mustard seed is very, very tiny. And if you have even that much faith and you look at a mountain, the mountain will move. And of course, it doesn't always move when we want it to, but that's what Jesus is trying to stress uh, to the crowd. Uh, that they might uh, be able to, to see those things. Uh, I look at all the places where I've been and, uh, and, and everything and um, all the mountains that I've seen and, uh, you know, the, uh, the Whitefish Point and all those places up in, uh, it's, it, it's just tons of them, but I did underline this little part right here, okay? Uh, of all the snowmobile trips that I have taken, they all involve mountains except for one. Uh, I'm talking about the vacation and going away for a long period of time type trip. It was in Michigan's Upper Peninsula. And we didn't find any mountains there. There was some higher ground <coughs> along the lakes, but no mountains. And I gotta say, it was probably the least uh, uh, important to me uh, after we got all done. Snow, snow as high as this room, and I'm not kidding you. Uh, they had the blowers that would dig through and blow it over the top, and people were had ladders up to their upstairs windows because the snow was just simply too deep to travel. Um, I'm, not, I'm not trying to make, it, make you think about the rains that we're having that translate the snow here this year, but. And when, when you think about the, the UP, uh, I didn't want to become a youper, so we got out of there. And I know some people think, well, what's a youper? Well, if you've ever listened to those guys, I mean, uh, second week of deer camp, Rusty Chevrolet, um, uh, 30 point buck, all those done by the Youpers, and the Youper is uh, someone who comes from Michigan's Upper Peninsula, UP. Uh, they're, they're termed as Youpers, and uh, that's where that group got their, I don't know whether they were from that or not. But all the mountains that I've seen, you know, the, I've got them listed here. I've got the Green Mountains and, and the White Face Mountains, all in New England, the Adirondacks, Catskills, Poconos, the Smokies. I haven't never ridden snowmobile in the Blue Ridge or Smokies because a little further south, all they do do that. And the Black Hills was a great time, and in the, in the Dakotas, uh, it was really good. The Cascades, of course, and Washington. And then we come back home and we see the Appalachians here, the Allegheny Plateau, and, and, and it was kind of the seeds were sown for this last week when we went on our, uh, a day away from the pulpit, and uh, uh, we went on a joy ride, and uh, we headed out to uh, Colton Point out, out in Tioga County, um, at the Great Pennsylvania Grand Canyon. Um, and just looked up. It had been, well, the last time I ever looked up there, I was on a snowmobile with a guy. Um, but it had been a long time. So we, we just grabbed some vittles and ate it while we were up there and looked off. And um, it was just, it was a beautiful sight. I mean, the sun wasn't out. The colors would have been better if the sun had been out. But we watched some people on the old railroad bed down along the Pine Creek uh, riding their bicycles and uh, all those kind of things. But it was, a, it was a wonderful thing to be able to see. And then 
as is par for the course if I'm involved, we headed out on some of the, the roads that we didn't know exactly where we were, but they, we came to a fork in the road and one gave us a choice of, I don't know what the one was, but the other was Dead Man's Gulch. And I said, well, let's go to Dead Man's Gulch and see what's there. Um, probably a log slid down the side hill and, and got the guy or something. We never know. But we came out and, uh, and wandered back. And I thought to myself, the mountains once again uh, call as, as they do. Now, if you're headed back to, if you go to Williamsport, some of you may uh, fairly regularly, I haven't been down that way in quite a while. But if you're on your way back up 14, that long, dark, dismal stretch between Trout Run and Canton, um, if you look, there's a, there's a sharp curve in the road. Before you turn that uh, turn, there's a mountain that my folks and people I've always ridden with call it Chocolate Drop Mountain or Hershey Kiss Mountain. And you might know the one that it is, and people down that way might say, why do you call it that? It's not that at all. It may not be, but for me, that's what it is. And I try not to look too long because you got to make the turn in the road, but there it is, and it's almost a perfect, you know, like a chocolate drop or a gum drop. Uh, you couldn't get it better. I did a funeral once for a family, and they said to me, we would like you, after the funeral, to come with us to the top of that mountain. We've got some fireworks we're going to light off, and we're going to sprinkle uh, Grandma's ashes up there. Well, the service got over around 2 in the afternoon, and I'm thinking, as much as I like mountains, uh, it was in November, and uh, I said, I, I'm afraid I won't be able to make it. Uh, it would have been interesting, i got to say. I don't know how they made it up there, but they did it. Um, the reports were that it went well. Um, but I think of that, too, when I, when I come around that, that place. Two Top, Mount Bailey. Uh, the one place I haven't been yet is Pikes Peak. I gotta, someday I gotta go there. I don't, think, I don't know how much snowmobiling they do up there, but I'd just like to get up there and do that. And I always praise God that even though the air is thin in those places, you know, I was always able to do that and not have any issues. We had people with nosebleeds and, and sick to their stomach and passing out and all kinds of things, but uh, it, was, it was great to be able to do that. Another place I probably will never be would be Mount Everest. Uh, that's a, something that all big mountain climbers really want to go to do, but uh, that's, I think that's a little beyond me. Uh, I might just stay off in there. I never see too many snowmobiles way up there anyway, and you're probably right some. But we have our own right in our own backyard. We have Kellogg Mountain and with all the towers on off to our south, and we have Barkley Mountain over here a little bit more to the southwest, and we just have all these. We have Armenia Mountain, and uh, it's just the Allegheny Plateau, which is where we were on last Sunday. Um, it's just uh, all these things, and then you take it back to the very backyard in which I live, uh, good old Mount Pisgah. We've made some trips up there with our young people and our church and our brave and our um, fleet of foot or whatever you want to say. And I learned about a lot of things that I didn't know as I walked with you guys, as you shared your stories. Um, going back around a little bit, uh, there was a place out in western Pennsylvania that we took Zach when he was a little boy. Um, it's called the Horseshoe Curve, and, and the trains go up around there. Initially, in the old days, they, they dragged the cars on, a, on some kind of a rope mechanism and dumped them over the top and hooked onto them on the other side. Mountains can be barriers, can't they? Then later, they tunneled, but that wasn't the greatest thing in the world, and then finally they made this long, curving, carving, railroad up around the, and, and the, the trains really pull hard coming up out of there. Well, we went out to visit there, and they had a visitor center way at the bottom of the hill. No trains were coming. They, they can let, you can see the schedules of the trains and hear the radio chatter. And so I will go downstairs, and so we went all the way downstairs, and just as we got to the bottom, I think Zach might remember that, a train was starting to come up the hill. And this, there was a lot of stairs, and we huffed her up over there and finally got up to where we could see it. Mountains can pose problems, they can make us work hard, and they can be in our way, but when we get to the top of them, we can rejoice to be able to see what we can see from the other side. Jesus said, if you have the faith as small as a grain of mustard seed, you can move mountains. Mountains. Praise God, we can have that. I can remember there was a place uh, called Ray's Pass, not far from Jackson Hole, Wyoming, it was around 7,200 feet. It was always getting full of snow, always avalanche 
branches and they would fire off the old artillery pieces and try to shake the snow off the hill. It was a, there was a train track that went through there. And they had some difficulties uh, doing that, I can remember. But whatever it took, they would get through. And because the train went up over there, we would find ways, uh, the locals found ways to ride their snowmobiles up through there and, and make it through um, to where they needed to go. Today I'm gonna ask you, okay, as you sit in your pews, to think about the things that you consider as being that mountain, that barrier. I mean, any time that you think about our frontiersmen that headed west, I mean, they, they had all kinds of problems with those wagons and those horses, but when they got to that Rocky Mountain, and the first time I ever saw the Rocky Mountains, and the first thing I'm thinking about is Dumb and Dumber, if you ever saw the movie when the, the guy takes them in the wrong direction, and the other guy wakes up and says, they're out on the Kansas plains, but the Rocky Mountains would be a lot rockier than this. And, and it's, it just makes you laugh. But, but as, you, as you go out through there, and you can imagine when they met those Rocky Mountains, they had to find a way, and it was not easy. First time I ever saw the Rocky Mountains, all I'd seen is the Eastern Mountains, and we call them mountains, but when you get out there, they'll say, you guys don't have mountains, you just have little humps. And uh, when you compare the two, the fellow that I went out with had been in the military, he'd been in Switzerland and Austria and all those places, and he said to me, he said, Vern, when we land, because we are we had a night flight, when we land and it gets daylight, you're gonna be really impressed with what we see, because we landed in Bozeman, Montana. And I can remember as I, as I stepped out of the plane and it was just starting to get light, there was a little fog in the hills around us, but when the fog cleared, it was such an impressive sight to see those mountains, and yet they're so rugged, they're so tough, so hard to deal with. There was places where you could get to the top and they would show you where, where you could go. And one was an old abandoned ski run. But once we got our way to the top and there was a lot of spinning, there was a lot of chewing, there was a lot of puffing and puffing to get the sleds up there at times. But you could take off and go down. It was just like you were skiing, only you had a motor and a track under you, which I prefer. <laughs> it's a little better than just two sticks under you. And then down we go. I mean, the sled was on its own, and you just kind of steered it and, and leaned with it. And it was a lot of fun as the powder would fly up over your head, and you'd go to the bottom. And we'd ask each other, you want to do that again? And we did that until we got hungry, and then we went to find something to eat. The mountains. The mountains of our lives. They create crisis. They create blockades. Hardships. How do we get up over those mountains? What are we going to do? Jesus said, if you bring it to me, and you pray with a faith as small as a, as a mustard seed. You can move mountains. I've always been impressed with that scripture. Because as, as all the things that I've seen the Almighty God do in my life, it always seemed to be, I, I revert back to, you know, could he really do that this time? Could he really do that much more? I think he's done a lot for me lately. What's his capacity? It's just, just natural for me to do that. And I think it's probably natural for you to do that. And the disciples came to him and said, well, we couldn't, we couldn't cast this demon out. Now, demons are for real. And never, never think that that's something that's just fake or it's on TV. It, they are for real. They are our enemies as Christians. They're cast out angels, uh, and their work is to destroy uh, you and me and everything else if they possibly can. And they will. But God won't let them, let them do that because Jesus has claimed the victory over these things. But in this case, uh, this demon had possession of this, this boy. And the disciples, they prayed and they tried and they could, not, uh, they could not gain traction on it. It was a mountain they couldn't move. So the best thing they could do is, is turn it over to Jesus. And uh, the dad knew this Jesus. And so many times we hit a mountain. We hit a crisis. We, we try to pull or plow our way through something with main strength. And all of a sudden, after we beat ourselves all up, and, hey, you know, Jesus might be able to help us through this one. We, we never seem to move totally away from that because of our human nature. And I've walked with Jesus a long time and known and seen what he can do. And every time that I finally surrender whatever it is and give it to him, he does something with it. Not always what I want to do. Some of the mountains that we've tried to ride up over, snowmobiling and whatever, we've had trouble and had to back up and go the other way. Get mad at the guy who was in the lead and took you down the wrong trail. I can remember with a group of guys.
guys hunting on Mount Pisgah. And it's back the very trail of the last hike we walked down. It was back when I was just starting to hunt. The guy had an old international scout. Remember those old things? Um, anything less is just a car. Remember the slogan in the 70s? And uh, uh, we just loaded it with guys. I mean, it was three or four on the hood. One guy was hanging on the bumper. I don't know how he hung on. <clears throat> the doors were open. The cab was just full of people. One guy was on the back hanging on to the spare guy. Got up there about where that prospect rock is. If you walked on the hike, you'll remember it. And all of a sudden, smoke started rolling out from under it, and his clutch got hot. And uh, all right, everybody off, everybody, everybody move. And he finally got up there when everybody got off the machine. Sometimes things don't work out the way we want it to work out, but we get there. The rest of us hiked up over because in those days it was. We gotta get a buck and we gotta drive one out. We're gonna go and we're gonna do this. And uh, the old folks would expect you to do it. And so we did. Mountains to be moved. You're running them through your mind. You've seen the ones and you've known the ones that you've already faced and things have happened in, in your life in times past. There'll be new ones. Jesus said that there's gonna be trouble in this world. He said, but don't be concerned with it because I have overcome the world. And those are comforting words no matter what trouble we run into. Mountains to be moved. Faith as small as a grain of mustard seed can move a mountain. And that's about all we can muster a lot of the time, isn't it? Just a little bit of faith. But that's all it takes. And Jesus picks it up from there. And he also coaches his disciples. Continue uh, to practice the kind of prayer that you need and, and the fasting, as he mentions, and, and the dedication that you need, reading your Bible and, and remembering Scripture and praising God all the time for what he can do. I think one of the latest mountains I've run into is too much rain. I don't know about you, but it's been pretty rough. When I go and feed the heifers and I can hardly walk up to the feed trough when uh, over by the well, Wetona Road, it's, it's kind of serious. And I pull up in there with a the truck and even though it's four-wheel drive, you know, I've learned through the years that she starts clawing a little bit. Now, don't go any further, Vern. You walk the rest of the way because you go any further and it won't back out. So God does help us, and he's waiting for us. And whatever it is in life, I want you to roll it up to him. I have a little faith here, you know, and we all know struggles do exist in this life. They do. But I want you to roll it up to him and say, I can't handle this one, but I know that you can. And when he sees that kind of faith and you're willing to open your heart, Open your mind, open your soul, and lay it out to him. He will take care of it. And the mountain will go some way or the other. You'll get up over the mountain. Um, as I said earlier, sometimes we have to climb the mountain. But in some way or another, you will conquer whatever that is that God gives you to do. And the final victory, of course, will be when we meet Jesus in his kingdom. Uh, that's our ultimate victory. And many times we overlook that when we think about people who are struggling with a sickness or whatever. Why doesn't this go away? Why doesn't that disappear? But the ultimate victory is you and I standing before our Lord and Savior. And when the angel opens the book of life and they scan uh, the name list uh, and you're there, I'm there, whoever accepted Jesus Christ is there. The ultimate victory is won because we have an eternal life that we can celebrate and live with our almighty Savior, uh, Jesus Christ. So, all about mountains today, mostly because I went to the mountains last week, and now you've heard a little bit about the Chocolate Drop Mountain. I've got all kinds of things here that I that I had uh, out for you today. But uh, figuratively, we have mountains that we need. Uh, spiritually, we do. And, of course, we have the real ones, the physical ones as well. So give it to the Lord. You can't handle it all by yourself. Uh, I can say that with a surety. But once you kick in with him, it's just like putting chains on the Jeep or something. I, I, I go back to the guy who's trying to make it up Sunfish Pond and the snow was about two feet deep, maybe three. I don't know how deep it was. I, would, I didn't pay attention too much that we were snowmobiling, but he was trying to get a, a CJ5 up that mountain road with, with chains on all four wheels and he went just about so far and uh, he finally made it. I wouldn't have done it. I mean, I'll give him credit because I had a Jeep once and and Wade's smiling because he's, he's a Jeep guy. The old Jeep. I'm not talking about the new stuff. The old CJs. And many remember the chariot of fire that I used to drive here. Um, that was, uh, that we used to bring to church. And 
They got a kick out of it. But God will help you. Either conquer the mountain or give you a zip line to zip over to the other side like Yogi Bear does. <laughs> See, I pick up things. I told Wade, for everything I'm going to give out here in the name of the Lord, I'll pick up Wade's messages and uh, it's all good. So, And we got to be a, a kid sometimes. Shall we bow our heads for a closing word of prayer? Father, we do praise you again for such a beautiful day, for being able to celebrate all that you've given to us, salvation, fellowship, your Holy Spirit, promise of, of being able to, to know you whenever a mountain pops up in front of us, to know what to do, and that is to give that problem to you. And if we just give that problem to you and hold our faith, even such a tiny grain as a mustard seed, you will look at it, you will honor it, and you will help us and say, even though you're frustrated with our lack of faith, you will help us and move us on so that we can get up over, around, or through the mountain and, and it's dealt with because we know you. We do pray that you would be with this message, this word, and we bless it and that it would go out from here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. 435.